Jackie Jones, Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. In Inferno in Space, Chapter One. Well, Biff, we'll soon be back on Earth. You can log your fifth routine patrol. My sixth, Rocky. It's been so quiet during the last few trips, I guess I stopped counting. Well, no, quiet or not, to me, every patrol with the space rangers is exciting. That's good. Keeps you on your toes. If we should get into trouble. You're expecting so? No, I don't think so. The United Worlds of the solar system has settled down to a lasting peace. We hope. Watch the control, Biff. I'm going after to check with Venus. Right. You, uh, getting ready for Earth, Venus? You know, we won't be there for quite a while yet. That's not fair, Rocky. After all, what else is there to do? Well, what about your navigation reports? Oh, I finished them hours ago. They're right over there on the bulkhead where they belong. I don't see anything but an empty clipboard. Is that the way you do your homework, Venus? Somebody either wants my job or is pulling my leg. I wonder who it could be. Gremlins. Gremlins is right. Honestly, Rocky, the charts were right here clipped to this board where I always put them. Say, what's this? Disintegrated paper. Yeah, it looks like there isn't much left of your navigation charts. What are you trying to do, build a fire? Rocky, how do you suppose that happened? That's what I'd like to know. Good thing I always make copies of those charts. Rocky, look at this. The same thing's happened to my copies. They've turned to dust. Maybe it's sabotage. There's nobody aboard but you, Biff, and myself. Good heavens. The pencil I just held in my hand. There's nothing left but the lead. What the pencil's made of is disintegrated. Polarized, just like the charts. Mina, something's very wrong here. The clipboard. It fell off the hook. Look, Rocky. My clipboard, too. It's turned to dust. It's the wood again. Ground into powder. I'm scared, Rocky. What's going on? Trouble in the control section. Masamata and ion trap out of order. Stand by. Wait for orders. The instruments, Rocky, they're coming loose. Cut console five. Number five out, sir. The masometer's getting worse. What's wrong, Rocky? I wish I knew. There must be some atmospheric disturbance. I'll take a look, Biff. we better get out of this area. Vina, secure blast off belt for emergency. You too, Biff. Hold out until we reach the Earth communication zone. They can pull us in by radar beam. Vina, you can come forward now. What happened to the instruments, Rocky? For some reason, everything made of wood in the ship started to disintegrate. Some of those instruments are set in wood frames. The whole panel's been affected. What's the trouble, Rocky? Are we under attack? We were, but we're out of it. Whatever pulverized the wood in the ship was far more powerful than we realized. What do you mean, Rocky? I don't know yet. But you'd better collect some samples of that disintegrated wood for Mayberry while we watch the Silver Moon. And believe me, she needs watching. Sure does. I told you Rocky would make it. Instruments are no instruments. Yes, Bobby, but he hasn't landed yet. I only hope your plans for the emergency landing will work, Mr. Secretary. We've taken every precaution. The landing will be a ground-controlled approach. I can't understand what happened to the wooden particles on the silver moon. Ever since Rocky's report, I haven't had a moment's rest. There must be an answer. 
I never heard of a force that could grind wood to dust by mere penetration. Professor, do you think it could have injured Rocky and his crew? We'll know soon enough. They're bringing in the silver moon, Mr. Secretary. Shall I get it for you on the visiograph? Go ahead, Marshal. They've made it. Looks like it's going to be a perfect landing. Thank heavens. I gave orders to impound the ship as a safety measure. I'm glad you did. That'll give me time to make a thorough analysis of the silver moon and the wood samples. <laughs> They've landed. You take over, Professor. Let me go with you, please. Certainly, Bobby. Plus 182. 11 NA24 plus 1H1. Got that, Bina? Yes, Professor. Well, that about does it. Professor, you haven't slept in two nights. Don't you think you'd better get some rest? There's no time for rest, Bina. And there won't be for quite a while, I'm afraid, for any of us. That sounds serious, Professor. It is. I think I've found the answer to the phenomena you encountered. I must get in touch with Secretary Drake and Rocky immediately. Please contact them right away. But it's three in the morning. That can't be helped. There's no time to lose. What you thought was just an interspace phenomenon, Rocky, is far worse than that. It's a catastrophe. In what respect, Professor? According to my findings, the silver moon traveled through a mass of uncontrolled energy. The particles which penetrated the hull of the ship and disintegrated the wood have tremendous velocity, similar to nuclear energy. Did you find any radioactivity? Not enough to affect you or your crew. What about the force itself, Professor? Do you think it's dangerous to human beings? Not as far as I know. Neither does it seem to affect metals or other materials, just wood. This terrible unknown force could spell disaster to civilization, should it ever reach us. Is there a possibility that this force continues through space and attacks any of the other planets? I wish I could answer that. We know nothing till we locate the source, which must be some sort of explosion. Man-made? I doubt it. I believe our opponent is nature. So far, no man has been able to harness this kind of energy. I see. Well, what's our next move, Professor? After I complete my telescopic survey, we'll have to go on a reconnaissance flight. The silver moon will be ready. It's being repaired now. Uh, one more thing, Mr. Secretary. I suggest that you suspend all space travel until we know all the facts. There's great danger out there. I'm afraid more than we know. I'll take care of it immediately. The planetary nebula, Bobby. But, Professor, I never heard of a moon having a vapor ring around it. It's a very rare phenomenon. Is this the one you saw through the telescope? The one that gives us all the trouble? It looks that way. You see, this ring-shaped cloud of gas and dust surrounding the moon's circle indicates strongly that eruptions in that area are exciting the atoms. What's the reason for those eruptions? I can't tell. Telescopic viewings are blurred by Earth's atmosphere. We'll know more when we get there. Well, I need my anti-radiation suit? No. Why not? Because you're not going, Bobby. But, Professor... No buts. It's too dangerous. There's nothing so unpredictable as concentrated energy running wild. You sent for me, Mr. Secretary? Yes, Rocky. Sit down, please. Since I received the uh, professor's report, I classified his findings and ordered a strict news blackout in the interest of public security. Well, I'm glad you did, sir. You mustn't get out that there's a disaster occurring in space. What if that disaster should strike one of the planets of the United Worlds of the solar system? I shudder to think what the results would be. It would mean chaos, sir. Once all the wood starts to disintegrate, civilization will collapse with it. Let's hope your reconnaissance flight will give us a clue to what we must expect and what we must do. 
We'll blast off as soon as work on the Silver Moon's completed, sir. What precautions are you taking to protect ship and crew? All the wood's being eliminated. The entire ship has been coated with a new radiation reflector. Are you sure that will be sufficient, Rocky? The professor thinks so. If his theory is correct, that a distant moon is erupting, do you intend to land there? Now, that's entirely up to the professor. Please take every precaution, Rocky. We'll do our best, sir. I know that, Rocky. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Well, we're blasting off in one hour. I'm uh, very grateful you both volunteered for this trip. But I'm not going to minimize the dangers. If either one of you would rather not go, please say it now. Well, I consider it an honor to go with you, Rocky. So do I. Thanks. Professor Mayberry is standing by with some of his scientific equipment. Let's help him get it on the ship. All right, Rocky. Oh, Bev, you stay by here and double check the instruments, huh? Right. Hi, Bobby. Hello, Biff. Everything under control? Oh, leave it to Rocky. Everything's ship shape. You know. Rocky wanted me to come along, but we decided with the professor gone, somebody had to look after the lab. Oh, that's right, Bobby. We all have to work together. Say, Biff, how many flights have you logged so far? Hmm, all six. This is going to be my seventh. Why, I've logged so many, I can't even remember. Well, you're a veteran space ranger, Bobby, almost like Rocky. Yeah, and no space ranger likes to be grounded. Well, I'm sure this is only temporary. Every time something exciting goes on, I've got to stay home, because I'm still a kid. Looks like I'm never going to grow up. Oh, it only seems that way, Bobby. Well, I'd better get back to the lab. There's always some final instructions. You know, running a lab is a responsibility, Biff. Oh, I bet it is. So long, Ranger. Lots of luck on your reconnaissance mission. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> Ready for blast off, Mr. Secretary. Any further orders? No, Rocky. Just come back safely, all of you. And Rocky, be sure to check in when you leave the communication zone. I will, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Secretary, I'd like to have you relay a message to a member of my ground crew. Bobby's the name. You can tell him yourself. He's right here. Your orders, sir. I expect you to take a refresher course in celestial navigation, Bobby. You were pretty rusty on our last flight. I'll be ready when you get back. Good luck, Rocky. Thank you, Bobby. See you soon. Out. Secure blast off belts. Secure blast off belts. Well, here we go off to space. Four tiny specks in the universe. Equipped with a tiny spaceship and some scientific gear. Fight the great unknown, powerful and terrifying. I often wonder where man gets the courage to stand up against the elements. I'm like the present, Rocky. You stay at the controls, Biff. I'm going after with the professor. Yes, sir. Anything missing, Dina? Now, Professor, you know we double-checked every piece. Well, quite a laboratory you have here, Professor. Almost as complete as the one at the observatory. More complete, Rocky. I had to design several new devices to cope with some new tricks of nature. Well, I hope that's all they are. Tricks. We'll soon find out. I intend to measure and evaluate the disturbances of various degrees straight up to their source. I'll do my best to take you there, sir. Oh, we'll get there all right, Rocky. I'm like a scientific bloodhound on the trail of a dangerous criminal. And I won't rest till I track him down. But when you do, sir, you'll have a real problem. You can't defy nature. Oh, yes, Rocky. We do it every day on Earth and in space. But nothing like this. 
The only way to win a battle against the elements is to pit energy against energy. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. How soon will we need our anti-radiation suits, Professor? We won't need them at all. The coating of radiation reflector covering the silver moon will be our protective armor. If that proves insufficient, ten space suits won't save us. The only nuclear particles to enter the ship will enter through this sealed tube to be processed and analyzed. If the intensity increases, it will serve as a guide to the source of the disturbance. Did you say we're getting close to that source, Professor? I can only guess and rely on these. The instruments will signal the danger point. Time to contact Earth, Rocky. We're approaching final communication zone. Oh, thanks, Ben. Anything important? Yes, sir. I've just been informed of an escape that may have grave repercussions. Who is it, Marshal? It's Agar, sir. He's been missing since last night. Agar, one-time ruler of Medina. Who'd have destroyed his own people if Rocky hadn't stopped him in time? The man we permitted to remain on Earth when Medina exiled him. This is a man we treated not like a prisoner, but as an unfortunate man who might straighten out. I never thought he would, sir. But he seemed to make an honest effort. He broke no rules. He gave us no trouble. Maybe he was just biding his time. Suppose he did. Where would he go? What could he do? Agar has no power left. His followers deserted him long ago. I wouldn't know what he's up to, sir, but wherever he's hiding, he'll be recognized sooner or later. Exactly. Send out an international alert to all law enforcement agencies. Right away, sir. so long, Dorton? Well, I would have been here sooner, Agar, but you know I have a civilian job with the Office of Space Affairs. I didn't want them to get suspicious. What did you find out? They've sent out an international alert on you. Well, they won't find me if you follow my orders. I don't see how we can go ahead with your plan with everybody looking for you. Just leave that to me. It won't be the first time I outsmarted the Earth people and Rocky Jones. Once he's out of the way, nothing can stop us. I think we'd better forget about Rocky and proceed with the rest of your plan. Rocky is one man I'll never forget. Not until I've settled the score. What's the matter with you, Dorton? You want to be an insignificant little chirp down here for the rest of your life instead of my personal aid once I'm back in power? But maybe you haven't got the courage I thought you had. The courage that makes great men. I wasn't thinking of my safety, sir. It was you I, I was concerned about. Don't concern yourself. Trust me and stay loyal. Agar never forgets a friend. Or a foe. Professor. The cinelometer is reacting. It certainly is. We're entering the disturbed area. Look at that, Dina. Background radiation is up 50 milli Rathkin. Tell Rocky to see what he can get on the visiograph. Yes, Professor. Rocky. Yes, Vina. Professor would like you to check visiograph. Right. Stand by. 
Guess his haze dead ahead. Looks like the ground fog we have on Earth. I've never seen anything in space like this before. That's it. Don't change your course, Rocky. Head right into it. Staying on course. It may look like ground fog, but it's made up of pretty deadly stuff. This haze is extremely radioactive, indicating a very strong reaction. I see. We are dealing with a thermonuclear reaction. So terrible. Yes. We are approaching something resembling a hydrogen explosion. Professor, we're moving clear of haze. We're heading for a moon. A circle, I believe. Stay on course, Rocky. According to my instruments, Circo is our destination. Right. Professor, if Circo is the cause of this nuclear storm, why is the area around it clear? The haze we passed through was created by an explosion propelling energy into space. Lucky thing, Circo is so far from Earth. Distance means nothing to uncontrolled energy hurled into space. It will keep on going until it hits something. You mean Earth or some other planet could be in danger? Anything in the path of this avalanche could be in danger. Watch the instruments, Vina. I'm going for it. Interference. Is it affecting the silver moon? Well, so far, so good. Looks like your reflector holds up. Quick, Rocky, take a look. Right, Professor. Judging by this, there must be terrific eruptions on Circo. Just look at that vapor. Let's get closer, Rocky. As close as possible. Yes, sir. I'd better get back to my instruments. They'll tell the story. I'm just going to call you, Professor. I can't keep up with these. We're approaching an eruption, Vina. Keep checking the scintillometer. I'll take the rest. Reaction 290 billion per pound. Temperature at explosion center, 10,000 degrees centigrade. Sighting chain eruptions, southeast. Hold to course as safety permits. Secretary Drake cannot be discussed over the astrophone. It must be done in complete secrecy. Are things that bad, Professor? I'm afraid so, Rock. Based on this final analysis, I've come to a shocking conclusion. We on Earth are faced with a disaster that will be worse than total destruction, because some of us will live to suffer through it. Professor, I, I can't believe it. These are the facts, Rocky. We have witnessed not just ordinary eruptions. Circo has turned into an inferno of energy running wild and overflowing into space with Earth as the target. Are you sure, Professor? Well, if what you say is true, why hasn't Earth been affected so far? Nature has put us on probation. You may call it a reprieve. The reason Earth has been spared till now is our moon, which has become for a very short time a shield hanging between Circo and Earth, the target for the nuclear storm. Yes, but our moon isn't stationary. It moves. I know that, Rocky. And if we haven't found the answer to this destructive Circonian force by the time our moon moves out of its path, we'll be faced with chaos and disaster such as never been experienced by mankind before. But is there an answer, Professor? No man can stop the movement of celestial bodies or the violence of nature. I know that, Rocky. All we can do is search. Search without ceasing. It's 
week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Rangers.